Hello and welcome to On Track GP. I'm joined by Matisse and Joe, and we are going to delve into five predictions that already look stupid. <laughs> I'm worried about what one of them might be. Are that our <laughs> predictions that we made in the preview? No, okay. these are just general predictions for the season. Okay. okay. Gifted to us by God. Okay. Um, that now looks stupid. <laughs> Thank God. Uh, well, we'll start with you, Joe. Yep. Uh, one prediction that already looks stupid is that it's Ferrari's year. Yeah, that was that's stupid. Yeah, <laughs> terrible. Awful prediction. Uh, yeah, yeah, not, 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 uh, definitely not Ferrari's year. Not even close to Ferrari's year. It's the opposite of Ferrari's year. It's Ferrari's hell <laughs> yeah, this year. It is. Uh, we started 2023 season uh, with the unprecedented car, the SF23. Mm -hmm. uh, new boss, Fred Vasseur, he was at the helm. Everyone was excited. No strategic errors this year. Mm. Um, and it was an incredible launch, wasn't it, at Maranello? Um, but yeah, they've got no podiums. No. After three ra three races, no podiums. Yeah, so. they have a d <sighs> two DNS. Yeah, I was trying to like back it up with <laughs> oh, but you know the car. But actually, that's the <laughs> that's the problem. So <laughs> car's very important. Yeah, it's, for motor <laughs> racing, it's it is quite important, important isn't it? I, I'd <laughs> say so. <laughs> uh, yeah, they, they need to fix. They need to make the car quicker, more reliable, and they need to start scoring points. It's not. It's not going to be Ferrari's year, but maybe in three years. Wow. Yeah, I mean, do you know what it is with Ferrari? It's a long way to go, man. They've picked a bad time to, to drop off because the, the field is more competitive than ever at the top end. Um, sometimes we're used to just seeing one team or max two teams competing. Last season, Mercedes dropped off so much, it was basically just Ferrari and Red Bull. But this is now four teams up there. Mm -hmm. um, and like I said in, in, a, in, a, in a previous, Alpine as well, could, could cause a, enough problems to... To, I'm not saying they're going to crack into the top four, but they're going to take enough points from the top four to make your finishing position look like a third and slip to a fourth and, mm -hmm. and, and ruin your campaign. So yeah. they're, they're kind of like the, the devils in this Alpine for yeah. a lot of teams. Yeah, so, I think so. Yeah, that's a stupid prediction. It was yeah. a stupid <laughs> prediction. And I made it as well. Uh, but Ferrari <laughs> will be hoping that their upgrades, uh, they were planned for Barcelona, they are now due for Imola. Mm. So that's round six. Um, so a little bit earlier. So yeah. hopefully uh, it might not be a disastrous season yeah. further on down the line. But, but every, everyone's upgrading. Everyone is so upgrading. So it's not like it's just true, Ferrari. Exactly. Everyone's going to upgrade. But you so. do have the drivers in Charles Leclerc and Carlos yes. Sainz to do that. And they have yeah. been a little bit unlucky this year so yeah. far. All right. Uh, moving on to the next prediction that's made you look stupid. Uh, Alonso. <laughs> <laughs> looked at Matisse there. <laughs> Really looked straight at Matisse sorry, when you said stupid. Bit, sorry, it was just that Chelsea Spurs rivalry just coming into play Red on Bull Mercedes one. rivalry. Uh, and, and, Red Bull, <laughs> and a Red Bull Mercedes. Uh, yeah, okay, so this prediction is Alonso made a mistake going to Aston Martin. Lots of people were very critical yeah. of it. Everyone said it was a big money move. Yeah. Uh, but people are now looking stupid. Yeah, that, that is probably one of the stupidest predictions um, this season because Alonso, it could not be going better for him. Mm. He's literally back on the podium. He really can win a race this year, and I think he will. I think he will win a race. I think that Aston Martin's quick enough and to take advantage of any slip up from Red Bull, or any issue on any given weekend. So the fact that he's gone from an Alpine team that were performing well and were looking strong, but they weren't this good. And mm. you know, this is this is another level he's kicked onto to the point where he's splitting splitting Ferrari and Mercedes and, and really pushing them out of podium position. So <sighs> It puts a lot of stress on Stroll. He's doing this well um, as, as you know, the son of the team. Because of course, I think if he's ambitious enough, um, you know, to to try and win championships, which is what it sounds like, yeah. they're saying, yeah, we have podiums, but that's not enough. We want to win. Yeah. He's like, when are we going to win? So if you want to win, you, you you would like to have two drivers up there fighting. So I think um, at some point when that wrist injury is completely cleared up if mm. it's not already i think it, i think he's back fight, fighting full fitness now yeah. so but i, I think i I, I, I'm, oh, I like lance stroll i, I like him think he's all right i like him but if if they're if 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 his father is going to be so aggressive on wins yeah he needs to get up there with alonso yeah. to fight so it's two cars on strategy and it's not just stroll you know strolling about in sixth yeah. you know living life and performing that's not going to be enough if you want to win races. You know? Okay, all right. Number three on uh, stupid predictions, that Williams will struggle. Now, actually, I don't think that's too much of a stupid prediction no. because based on history, that would tell you that would be accurate. Mm. Uh, however, with the departure of Joss Capito uh, and bringing in James Vowles, they have looked... A lot more competitive. I won't say really competitive, but they have looked a lot more competitive. Mm -hmm. uh, and if it wasn't for kind of the issues that they had out in Australia, obviously Albon spinning out. Um, Albon did pick up some points in Bahrain. Yeah. Um, you would have to say that they're looking to probably not be bottom of the pack. Yeah. Um, 
I'd say uh, quite a lot of the teams at the bottom are scoring more points. Where in the past we've had, you know, se seasons where two teams haven't scored a point all season mm. has happened. W the teams at the bottom are picking up points already in the first three races. So, um, yeah, I think they're doing uh, absolutely, Abby, you're right. They're doing they're doing better. Uh, but we couldn't expect a huge amount more from what they're doing right now, I don't think. I think it's too early for me to say that that's not an accurate prediction because I do think when the season, you know, kind of settles down a bit, maybe the upgrades come in, we're going we're gonna to see that Williams most likely are still where we expect them to be. Mm. And Albon is the one that's really just got to push mm. for every point he can get because yeah. obviously the rookie is, is with him. Well, James Vowles, uh, he intends to make this a more competitive car. And I think maybe with the cost cap, Mm. Coming in, we can, over time, yeah. Yeah. see Williams be a little bit more competitive again. Mm. All right, number four. Nico Hulkenberg will have a difficult return. It hasn't been difficult at all. Mm. It's a strange one for people to predict that because I think he's quite an experienced driver. Mm. And um, he's been around for a while. He's, he's, he's been in Formula 1 for a really long time. Sometimes he's had a seat, sometimes he hasn't. That's, that's more than enough motivation this year to definitely push um, and, and prove people wrong and have that chip on your shoulder. And has has have really stepped up from yeah. a couple of years ago as 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 a as a as a as a, as a team, you know. I, I remember the days of just utter chaos, you know. Yeah. And you know, sponsorship money and Mazepin and arguments yeah, and you know, now it's like settled down, two solid drivers. I think I think Magnussen's a lot more mature. I think Hulkenberg's performing as well. He's he scored some points. I think it's 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 a nice position for them to be in it. They're not gonna they're not gonna do anything crazy in terms of um, getting on Alpine, but I think that there's a group after that which is like, you know, Haas, um, maybe Alfa Tari, Alfa Romeo. Romeo, that kind of group, um, McLaren. McLaren as yeah. well. And, and they'll, just, they'll just swap places and get points along the way mm. and try and do what they can do. What but it can has do. Been a, it's been a decent return, in my opinion. Yeah, mm. I totally um, agree. Anyway, and, you know, going into Baku, Azerbaijan, he is ninth um, in the table. He's level on points with Charles Leclerc. Yeah, mm. crazy. And he's ahead of his teammate Kevin Magnussen. Yeah. So mm. I think it's been a brilliant Strong return. Yeah, and yeah. if you think about it, he hadn't actually been competitively in a car other than kind of filling in here yeah. and there since 2019. Mm. So it's a great return he's made. Yeah. He's been a reserve driver a couple of times, hasn't he? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. No, good for him. All right, yeah. fifth and final stupid point. Uh, De Vries <laughs> will Hammer Sonoda. I mean, I think that's clear. Who said City. that? Well, there was a lot. There was. He, there was a lot. De Vries came De Vries. in with a lot of expectation because you remember he came in, he filled in, mm -hmm. he did a race in a Williams and got a point mm. to fill in. Uh, and people oh, yeah, were going, yeah. "Oh my God, this guy's coming in next year. He's the next big thing." Uh, and it, yeah, it hasn't. It hasn't. Certainly hasn't worked out. He, he's really struggling to get out of that. That. Um, that bottom five really mm. to be honest uh, so and, and, and no points yet and so and we've seen the opposite of what the prediction i think mm -hmm. sonoda's stepped up and been matured very matured and competitive and quick yeah. um so yeah it's been a really tough start for nick de Vries in f1 so far um we know he's talented we know he's done well in f2 so it'll be interesting to see whether he can start pulling that round over the next weeks months and even years yeah mm. i mean there is still time for de Vries to kind of get his foot in we're only three races in mm. um, but he needs to try and close that gap to sonoda yeah um and just make it a little bit more competitive uh, mm. there for him with, yeah with I, I, i'm not too surprised that sonoda's doing better i think sonoda's obviously had his his season prior he's had his rookie season as well so De Vries, you know, he's, he is older, but this is his first season in Formula 1. Mm. So I'm not expecting any rookie to come in and, and, you know, go straight in as the lead driver in a team unless they are, you know, a generational talent, yeah. which he's not. So mm. I'm not too surprised. Maybe the gap is bigger than I expected, but... Yeah, I think it's his first season. It's not, it's not too surprising that he's struggling a little bit. OK, but he's mm. not young, though. He's not, young. He's, not young. He's not young. Okay, well, uh, thank you very much, guys. Um, all of you in the chat, let us know what you think, if those five predictions uh, were indeed stupid or if you still think there's clout for some of them. Um, I think some of them are ridiculous, actually. <laughs> yeah. Quite ridiculous. Uh, but get yourselves in the comments, have a chat with us and let us know what you think. Also, for an in-depth look at anything uh, regarding F1, head over to planetf1.com for all the action. Take care. See you soon.